Hey guys, Zongetsu 134 here, bringing you a double Kamen Rider review. Yep, that's right. After uh, I decided to take a uh, a break after the Christmas season, after my uh, episode 15. And I was going to probably do 16 during my time off, but I decided, you know, I had family. And uh, that t this time of year is really, really rough in my, for my job because I'm in retail. So I decided, hey, um, I'll just put 16 and 17 together. And I will admit, uh, I think this has definitely been a, pre uh, a pretty good two-parter, and I apologize. I just watched 17 today, and I read a recap about 16, so pardon me if I forget some stuff. Um, I might kind of skim 16, just talk about like the, hi the highlights of it, and then move to 17, because I know it more since I just watched it. But basically, in episode 16... Uh, Sento basically is finally told that he is, uh, Kisara Kisaragi by, uh, by Night Rogue and goes through basically a breakdown as he's, uh, working on the Splash Driver. Uh, he tries to work on it while he's also, you know, going through basically a breakdown, realizing that he is not, in fact, uh, someone with, uh, with, amnesia or the rocker but that he is kitsuragi having his mind wiped and uh by by bloodstock and uh had his face changed as well by bloodstock uh this brings him into conflict with R uh, ryuga ryuga feeling anger for towards him but at the same time deciding that you know no you are not that gut man anymore you are kiryu sento and we need I, we need you to get back get back to fighting because if not, people are gonna die. Um, and I think it was a good it was good for that for that reason because it showed it showed Sento that the only way he can move forward he could do now was to move forward because he's not the people that he was that he was ki that were killed for him. He is who he is because now that per neither person exists. More or less, and I think, I think he's wor he's working on it because he's still kind of coping with it in episode seventeen. Um, we also at the very end get that Hokuto is finally going to declare war after not Namda Heavy Industries decided to arm the other two countries uh, using using people that can somehow turn into Smash without being turned into or without losing their humanity. As well as Hokuto getting their own Splash Driver thanks to Bloodstock after he stole the data for it uh, to create Common Rider Grease. Um, and basically the episode ends with them basically an all-out war being declared on Toto by Hokuto. And then later, I think, I forget the, I forget the third country's name because they have done nothing in this show. I think it's like Sendo or something like that. Something on the nest. I uh, sure I should look this up before I I went into. Uh... Hmm, but more or less, the other two countries against Toto. Um, like I said, I really like the episode. It's it's kind of a cool down slash introductory episode to what the rest of the, the conflict is now that uh, Night Rogue and Bloodstock have been revealed and more or less. The uh the common rider war war system has been built thanks to the Splash Driver, and all in all is be is the beginning of what is leading into the next arc of the show. Basically, the uh the war arc. Um. So yeah, and then in this episode uh, seventeen, Sento realizes after being forced by Toto to work for the government, or at least uh, se uh at least Ryuga does because. Night Rogue promises to clear his name. Uh, Sento basically uh, goes into a blue screen of death moment, uh, you know, and basically decides, you know, no, I'm not. We're not going to use the Splash Driver. Um, we're not going to use the Splash Driver, and we're going to because it's a tool of war, and I do not want to be a part of this war, nor do I want my weapons to be a part or my 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 common rider stuff to be part of this war. Um, while also, Misora has a breakdown in realizing that her her abilities are also what's caused this war as well. So, 
eventually Ryuga convinces Sen or eventually Sento is convinced to not to to fight, and Ryuga decides that is if uh, Sento will fight, he will use the power that Sento has given him, aka the Splash Driver, and we get the we get and the introduction of Common Rider Cross Z charged. Um, we it's also revealed that Hokuto not only has a Common Rider system, but also the ability to create smashes that can. Uh, still retain their humanity in the heart smashes. Most likely as a result of Namba Industries' data on both the Common Rider systems and uh, uh, Faust's experiments with Smash. So yeah, um, uh, debut of Cro uh, Crosby Charged, and I admit I really liked it. I like the fact that like he's more or less the he's actually like a human form of the energy packets. Or the jelly packets, uh, especially because like the head is basically the nozzle of a jelly packet. Um, for those of you wondering what the uh, Krazi and more likely uh, Greece is based on, uh, they are both based on uh, uh, basically these like these drink packets that Japan had that are popular. I think usually they're like nutrient packets. We have them over here too, like applesauce packets. But like they're a jelly, and you squeeze them to drink. Hence why the Splash Driver squeezes them to. Uh, create the suit and basically I think it's supposed to be like you're like a Bunsen burner or at least the idea is not only is it like a um a squeeze bottle it's also a Bunsen burner because the the tube that uh, Ryuga gets in when he activates the splash driver is basically like a beaker of fluid being heated up until the point that it erupts out of the bottle and creates Crosby charged um, I like the fact that he's silver compared to Grease being gold. Um, I also like that his his shoulder pads are not like the bottles like just sitting there but are inverted so that they like connect into his into his shoulders. I think they look better that way anyways because it, they look more like shoulder pads. Um, we also get to see how the Twin Breaker appears and it appears out of like these gel slots on his arms and more, most likely Grease will have them as well. That basically they create like this gel that merges that creates the uh, the twin breaker, and we get to see some of his. We get to see all of the twin breakers functions in this episode, which is I see. I feel weird because like like they show all the functionality of it, but like we're probably gonna get more out of that than just that, especially when we get to seeing what Grease's capabilities are. He shows up again in this, but he actually is unsuited, and we get to see his actor. Uh, played by uh, a former uh, Toku alumni. I can't think of his name, but he was uh, Otoya Kodanai in Kamen Rider Kiva. Um, and he does a good job here. He's he's definitely inter an interesting character. Uh, we meet him when Ryuga is about to face a smash, and instead of, instead he faces the smash without using... Um, without using uh, the driver. He actually, I think, uses, like think, one of Hokuto's full bottles. We'll get to that in a second. Um... And proceeds to uh, destroy the the smash without uh, without even using his henshin device, showing that perhaps the splash driver also enhances their abilities, or that this dude is kind of special. I'm going to assume that it might be the fact that uh, because he was because of the splash driver, he was um, he was uh, in, enhanced with his abilities to use full bottles. But yeah, basically, um, we get what the the main goal of this war is. Basically, Hokuto and the other nation are fighting Totos to get A, the Pandora box back, and then uh, a fight to get all of the full bottles from all the nations to unlock the... Well, actually, okay, the full bottles and panels to um, open the Pandora's box. There are apparently not just two, two panels and 20 full bottles. There are actually six panels, each needing ten full bottles. So basically there are 60 full bottles. Toto has 20 and Hokuto has tw and each and Hokuto and the combined nation have a total of 40. So while Toto definitely has like the the tech the tech and the like the the, the materials, the other group has much more need uh, much more uh Full bottles and panels, and thanks to their combined efforts, are probably are closing in on Toto, which basically 
Night Rogue's like, I need you guys because I like just because I'm you know the commander of Faust and Toto, I still need way more than just this. So I, I need common riders because be, not only that, the hard smashes in Greece have decimated Toto's forces. It's or at least are beginning to decimate their forces. We're, we saw a little bit early on of, like, the robots from each side fighting. There's humans, too, which I find weird. Like, if you have these robots that do not tire and do not need food or, like, resources, why are you sending humans onto the field? I don't know. <laughs> it might be because they don't... Neither group has enough resources to constantly fuel the, an army of robots somehow. Um, I really like the fart with Ryuga and Sento, Ryuga wanting to work, deciding to work with Toto and so it, the Toto government in some way, at least to get his name clear, but at the same time still wants to help Ryuga or uh, still wants to help cure you or uh, Sento names help Sento. Um, I also really like the, the, the showing of the main forces of uh, Hokuto with the, the hard smash trio and uh, their leader Greece. Um, it's actually kind of interesting because they are they're still kind of themed around like builds full bottles in a way because two of them were animals, uh Owl and Oh, I can't think of the other one. Oh, it was Owl Castle. And I can't think of what the other one was. Ah! But more or less because they're I guess enhanced because they can think for themselves. Uh, builds regular full bottles are going to be pretty much no match for them. Um, and he even has trouble using uh, Rabbit Tank Sparkling, which was interesting to me because I was like, wow, you actually, like, especially because he's using, still using a little bit of power from the Pandora's box. But yet these hard smashes are way stronger. Like, he, like, him and. Him and Ryuga didn't even manage to dehension them until the very end of the episode when they used a double rider kick. Like, and which is interesting because like Cross Sea Charge should have the same power as Grease, but like he like had trouble with them. Um, but yeah, I like them because like they're they're very silly. Like they while they're definitely like dangerous, like they <laughs> they're clearly kind of idiots. They're basically like the Ginyu Force in a way. Or like a quirky mini boss squad that you see in video games or other anime, where like they they're definitely very strong, but like their idiocy and the fact that like they're introduced early means they'll probably get bought, job pretty pretty quickly after they're introduced. Um, I will admit they had some great powers, like uh, the owl guy being able to fly, the castle guy being able to erect his walls, like basically like op like cut like close his gates to create like a defense barrier. Um, but yeah, they're pretty soundly defeated after, uh, Ryuga gets the Splash Driver. Um, and the episode ends with them fighting, uh, or at least getting ready to fight Greece. We, uh, it, it cuts there, so I'm guessing in the next episode, either Greece will be like, nah, let's not, I'm not really in the mood to fight. Or, you know, they'll, he'll end up jobbing, uh, Ryuga and getting Sento to show how strong he is. That happens a lot when you introduce new riders. I was kind of surprised Crossy Charge was introduced so early. I worry how, like, how much longevity he'll have, since I think that's only Ryuga's only other, like, uh, form. Although I think he's going to get one with, uh, one more using the hazard, uh, trigger thing. I think it can not only attach to the build driver, but also attach to the splash driver. Or it's going to attach, just attach to, like, like, he'll go into his base form and use the hazard trigger for that. Um, but yeah, I, I will admit, I, I thought that was kind of weird, but at the same time, I don't really mind, um, especially because I think we're getting into a, a much bigger plot, and I think we're going to definitely have some time before uh, we see any more of uh, Sento getting upgrades for build. I think we're going to focus more on, like, Grease and the the plan of what exactly is going on with uh, with Greece and the war in general. Um, I will admit I liked Greece as we were introduced. He's very different from the, uh, current, uh, the guy's previous role as current, uh, Otoya, um, as well as current I Otoya. Um, he's definitely very much more serious, but like when he punches through the smash, he's, he's like, Oh, I think I broke my hand. He's like, okay, it doesn't look like it's bruised or anything. Oh, but that really hurt. 
it was kind of interesting because he was definitely much more serious. Um, he talks about like his uh, Ryuga sees like the the effects of like the civilians having to like hide and like recover after being injured by the first wave of battle against Okoto. And like he's like, oh, this isn't the party I wanted to I wanted to go to. And like kind of talks like he doesn't really want like senseless combat. Like the preview at the end of this kind of seems like he he's looking for like a true battle, not like uh, the bat like the senseless violence that's going on with the war. He he's looking for a battle that's has meaning or purpose. Um, but we'll, we'll see. Um, we also had some really great moments between Misora and Sento because. Misora feels responsible for all the devastation that's happening. Like, she sees, like, a bunch of kids, like, crying because their parents are dead or injured, which is really dark for Kamen Rider. Like, this show has gotten so dark, and it's only, like, 17 episodes in. Um, But, yeah. um, So... She feels like she's responsible because she purified the full bottles and much like how Sento feels responsible for creating the splash driver and helping to create these weapon systems for the, for the, the warring factions and more or less her feeling so responsible makes him realize like, I, I have to take responsibility. I didn't want to fight because I didn't want to get my hands dirty, but now I realize I need to use the build system and I need to fight be, even if it means I get damaged or hurt or weapons are created, I still have to fight because I need to prove that the common Rider system is not a system for war. It is a system for justice, a system built for justice and peace. And it, it finally motivates Ryuga to use the splash driver, even though he knows that like its power will overload him. And it definitely does. He goes kind of berserk. For a few moments, and not only that, like he realizes he's so he's so much more powerful than regular craws. He punches through a tree and gets his hand stuck in it. Like he legitimately punched so hard, he punched through a almost through a tree. I, I'm guessing if he had concentrated more, he probably would have completely shattered the tree. But due to like the fact that he isn't concentrating and just letting the power kind of overtake him he almost ends up getting himself badly injured, especially when he's fighting uh, three hard smashes at once. Um, but yeah, um, I think all in all, it's a good episode. A great introduction to Cross Z Charged. Um, a great introduction to the the conflict that's going on now that Toto is finally getting ready to go to war. Um, we haven't really seen much about what's going on with Faust. It seems like Faust is kind of broken up thanks to the fact that Bloodstock and Night Rogue are on two different sides, but I doubt it. I feel like we're gonna we're gonna get like a story where definitely we're like like that this is all a part of Night Rogue and Blood and Bloodstock's plan. Or that, you know, Night Rogue and Bloodstock finally have like a battle. Especially because like he doesn't have any more upgrade forms, Bloodstock. Like common uh Night Rogue is going to become a common rider. He's gonna become common rider rogue. But we haven't seen any upgrades for Bloodstock, which makes me think either he's going to die or he's just going to be Bloodstock permanently. Um, or end up using like this tech to create a new form of Bloodstock that'll be like the main bad guy at the end of the series. Probably something along those lines. Um, but anyway, I think it was definitely a good episode. I like the introduction to this, to Greece, to the to the the ensemble bad guys of Hokuto to the ongoing struggle of what needs to be done to get to end this war. Basically Sento needs to get all of the full bottles and panels and he needs to be the one that gets the Pandora's box opened or at least prevent the Pandora's box from being opened by the bad guys. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely a good two, two episodes. I think 17 is a little bit stronger because I think 16 is a wrap up of the first arc of trying to prove their innocence and to prove that Faust is working behind the scenes. Um, and this is a great introduction to the war arc. Um, I'm definitely going to try and not do like two episodes. Cause I, I feel like this was a bit of a rushed vlog, but as I see on the timer, I'm, I've talked for almost 20 minutes. So this is going to be a long one to up to upload. So yay. Um, but anyway, guys, that's my review. Uh, come back next week when I will review Common Rider Build Episode 18. Until then, guys, take care.